Delicious. Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So in today's video, I thought I'd share how I make my homemade gravy made from base ingredients and the juices from a roast that I'd be making, whether it's roast beef, roast chicken or roast lamb. And in today's recipe, it is to go with the roast lamb that I made for Easter. And if you want to watch that video, I'll put a link in the card up above and in the description down below. So here are the base ingredients that you'll need for this gravy. You'll need an onion, some garlic, two stalks of celery and some tomatoes. I'm using baby tomatoes here because it's what we had, but you can use a whole tomato sliced if that's what you've got. I actually learned how to do this off one of Jamie Oliver's videos. I think it was a Christmas video that he did, but I know that he used chicken legs in his gravy. We're not that extravagant in this household, so I am just using these base vegetables. And the reason I do this is it makes gravy taste so much better having these vegetables in it. I've already rinsed out the celery and I'm just going to chop finely. And these make really good flavour for the gravy. So there's an advert on the television that comes on quite frequently, especially for um, around this time of year or around Christmas and what have you. And it pains me really to watch it because it looks like they've got a really nice roast and they've taken the time and bother to put so much effort in putting up putting a delicious bread together right at the end they make um, gravy from gravy granules and I just think oh my goodness what a total waste of the natural flavours from the meat that you've cooked why bother going through all that time and effort when you're going to use gravy granules for your gravy but anyhow hopefully by the time you've finished watching today's episode that you'll know how to make gravy. Now I'm going to use five in a little bit garlic for this gravy and all I'm doing is just adding it on there because what we're going to do is place the gravy base underneath the meat and what will happen is as the meat cooks it will start infusing the, the gravy base with all its meat juices. So, finally to add the onion, and we don't want to cut the onion too thinly because we don't really want it to burn, we want it to go soft and mushy and when we make the gravy we're, we want all the vegetables to be soft so they release their flavour into our gravy. Now I know the lighting is a bit funny here so hopefully it's not too overexposed. Once you've prepared all the vegetables cover and put in the fridge until you need it but remember to take it out for at least half an hour usually at the same time as when you're taking the meat out ready for roasting that way they both come to room temperature before you put everything in the oven. Okay so it's time to get everything going for the roast. As you saw from earlier I've already got my gravy my gravy base sorted and what I try to do is to put the veggies underneath where the bigger part of the meat will go namely because it helps to stop this all burning basically and then I'm going to put the little trivet there you go oh lovely mm, you can smell it already so I'm going to take this off and I will pour the lemon over 
just to add to that flavoring. Put the tray in the oven until the desired cooking time is up and then place the meat on the carving board and cover with foil and then tea towel on top to keep the meat warm while you prepare and finish cooking the rest of the vegetables or other trimmings that will go with your roast. So with all the vegetables that we've added, this is what the gravy base looks like. And you can see it's really nice because all the vegetables are mushy, there's a bit of caramelization, but we need that because it gives the gravy better colour. So all I'm going to do is put it in a pan and start making the gravy from this base. So what I tend to do with my gravy is also use vegetable water. So if you see the pan on the left hand side, this is the pan with the water that I use to boil the potatoes in before roasting in the oven. And I also sometimes use vegetable water. So for example, we had leek and other green vegetables to go with this roast. And I'd use some of that water just to retain some of the goodness to go in our gravy. So once you're ready to make the gravy, put a medium sized pan onto heat, onto medium heat and add all the gravy base ingredients into the pan. Take time to squash all the vegetables such as the garlic and the tomatoes against the sides of the pan to make sure that all their flavours get released into the gravy. So as you can see, all I've done is add all the bits from the tray into a warmish pan and all I'm doing now is squashing all the vegetables against the side of the pan especially the garlic and the tomatoes to bring out their full flavour to add more flavour to the gravy basically or if only this was a scratch and sniff and if only you could smell what I'm smelling you'd be a lot more hungry probably so that's what it looks like in the pan and you can see that it's very much caramelized but that's a good thing because caramelization means lots of flavour and as you can see all the bits like the tomatoes and the garlic are mashed up and you can't really see it anymore it's just flavour so now I'm just going to add some plain flour because that's all we've got and it's about that much that I'll be adding which is about a dessert spoon and the reason I'm doing that is because I want gravy for tomorrow. It's a big bit of meat and I'm sure we'll eat a lot of it today but it's not just for today and the good thing about that is it saves me from having to cook tomorrow. This will have leftovers. So let's not let that get to waste and I'm just adding some water. I think it's called deglazing. So basically what we're doing is removing all those bits because or like Jamie Oliver says, that's where all the flavour is. deglazing the bottom of this pan because while I've been cooking so while I've been while all the gravy bits are that the gravy base is in the pan it has slightly been sticking to the bottom but that's not a problem because we can deglaze the pan too 
and as you can see this is still quite thick but not the sort of gravy that we want but the magic thing is I've saved all the vegetable water which is where the where the potatoes and where the leeks were cooked in or parboiled in and that is the water that I'm going to use to make the gravy obviously we want smooth gravy so I'm going to add it in bit by bit okay so I know that looks really watery at the moment but as I boil it through it will start getting thicker and just boil it down to however thick you want it so I'm just going to leave that to come to a boil so all I'm adding is a bit of a beef stock cube I know I'm sure all the proper chefs are just going <gasps> at the moment but you know what I'm not a chef I'm just sharing what we do at home and how I cook my food and I'm going to add some mixed herbs about two spoons two teaspoons okay so I know that looks really watery at the moment but as I boil it through it will start getting thicker and just boil it down to however thick you want it so I'm just going to leave that to come to a boil basically okay so now that it's boiling we turn the heat down a little bit and I think I will transfer it to the other pan so I'm going to use that pan to work the kale that we're going to have with the roast and then um, while that's boiling it's going to get thick and also re remember to season it taste it and season it if you think it needs more salt and pepper and this is the point where you add add the salt and pepper really allow it to get to the consistency that you want your gravy to be and that's where you add your salt and pepper if it needs it so I hope you've enjoyed watching me make my homemade gravy and hopefully it's inspired you to make your homemade gravy after doing a roast. And if you like this video give it the thumbs up and remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video when I post it.